welcome back to physics through computational thinking. Today we will talk about uh, periodic motion and dynamics. We will review oxidatory motion and periodic motion, some of which you are already familiar with. So, this is going to be a quick review about the same and we will slowly build up on to anharmonic oscillators. Let us get started. So, just do a quick recap of simple harmonic oscillator. Remember we talked about a simple pendulum which oscillates back and forth and we said this for small angles this executes a simple harmonic motion. So, any oscillator that oscillates like uh, which follows the equation of motion given by x double dot plus omega square x equal to 0 is a simple harmonic oscillator. This equation we refer to as equation of simple harmonic oscillate, oscillator. x is a dynamical quantity, x is something that is changing in time. It could be position of a particle, it could be something else. In, in, in that sense, it is a generalized coordinate. It is some coordinate that you are representing by x, it could be an angle, it could be position of a particle. So, whenever a dynamical quantity, let us just call it x, whenever you have x double dot plus omega square x equal to 0, that is called the, then, then we say x executes a simple harmonic oscill oscillation. The solution of this equation is given by the second line over here, x of t equal to a cos omega t plus b sin omega t. Now, it is very easy to verify that. So, let us go ahead and quickly check that out. So, we are claiming that x of t is equal to a cosine of omega t plus b sine of omega t. One way to solve differential equations is to guess a solution and then just check it, check it out whether that is a solution or not. So, in this case we are doing, doing a guess. We are claiming that x of t equal to a cos omega t plus b sin omega t is a solution of the equation x double dot plus omega square x equals 0. So, let us go ahead and verify. So, first let us calculate what is x star of t. If x of t is given by this equation 1, I want to verify what, what is, I want to calculate what is x of t, x star of t. x star of t is a d by dt of cos omega t which is minus, minus omega sin omega t plus b omega cosine omega t for the second term. So, that is our x dot. Let us go ahead and calculate also x double dot of t. x double dot of t is minus a omega. These are the constants from the first term and derivative of sin omega t is cos omega t. So, this becomes omega square cosine of omega t plus we have got a b and a omega we will get a minus sign. So, this will become minus b omega square and derivative of co cosine is minus sin omega t. Okay, so now we see that this is nothing but minus a uh, rather we can write this as minus omega square a cosine omega t plus b sine omega t and whatever we have got here in the brackets this is simply x of t. So, we get minus omega square x of t and that gives me back my differential equation x double dot of t plus omega square x is equal to 0. Therefore, we say that this solution given by equation 1 is a solution for equation 2. Therefore, this is a solution of simple harmonic oscillator. Let us come back to this page. Now, this is one way of writing a solution. We can also write the same solution in multiple different ways. Depending on what you are doing, different solutions can become useful. For example, I can also write x of t as e to the power c e to the power i omega t plus d e to the power minus i omega t. That is, now I am claiming that that not only one gives me a solution for two, but also the alternate solutions are x of t equal to c e to the power i omega t plus d e to the power minus i omega t. Now, these solutions you can easily verify. Well, the reason this works out is because e to the power i omega t has a very nice property that you take two derivatives with respect to time and each derivative pulls out a factor of an i omega. So, two derivatives pulls out factor of i omega square, you get e to the power i omega t back and as a consequence you get minus omega square e to the power i omega t. If you put a minus sign over here, whether you take a plus or a minus sign over here, plus or a minus sign over here, 
it doesn't matter you basically pull out a minus omega square therefore this will also satisfy first equation so this 3 is also a solution of 1 similarly you can also write x of t equal to uh, let us choose a different constant f cosine of omega t plus y or you can write x of t as g sine of omega t plus psi these are two so these three equations that I have got this one that one this one and this one these four equations represent the same solution for this equation these are just different ways of writing the same solution so as a homework exercise I suggest that you go back and work out the relationship between the coefficients a b c d etc so you can you have to find c in terms of a and b d in terms of a and b similarly f in terms of a and b g in terms of a and b and the phases phi and psi these are called phases these can also phi and psi are also functions of a and b so as a homework exercise i invite you to work it out what is the relationship between these various constants now to remind you we have we have found the solution of this differential equation as any one of these four equations in order to find the constants you need more information you need to know the boundary conditions or the initial conditions if you know the initial conditions and the boundary conditions you can solve and find out what these constants are so for a differential equation this is the most general solution but in order to find an exact solution you have to look at the boundary value boundary conditions or the initial conditions given to you let us go back and try to understand the relationship between these four different styles of writing a solution as an example over here we will just consider the, this uh, this style and f cos omega t plus phi and g sin omega t plus psi we will we'll leave this out for a moment I will leave this for, as a homework exercise for you to work it out and plot it but these three we will we'll plot it over here and this is what I have done so I have plotted 2 sin 2t plus cos 2t 2 cos 2t plus pi by 4 and 2 sin 2t plus pi by 2 these are three different solutions written in the styles the first solution is written in the style of equation 2 and the, the second and the third solutions are written in the styles of last two equations of equation 3 and we, we plot this between t equal to minus 2 pi to plus 2 pi when I plot this this is what I get here is my plot and you see that all the three solutions represent oscillatory solutions sinusoidal oscillations essentially these are sinusoidal oscillations the only difference that you see is this one slightly higher than the these two the solid curve is slightly higher than the, and than the, the, the dotted in the dashed and they are shifted with respect to each other in the phase apart from that these solutions are essentially same so if I tune my parameters pi by 4 and pi by 2 over here I can actually go ahead and overlap these solutions exactly I leave that as a homework exercise for you to try it out now for simple harmonic oscillation, oscillation you can ask what is the time period time period is given by 2 pi by omega time period means when does your oscillator completes one oscillation omega is the speed angular speed given in radians per second so the oscillator comes back to its initial position if it has covered 2 pi radians therefore time period is 2 pi over omega this is a familiar relation you would have seen it many times before and we can also ask what is the frequency or how many cycles does your oscillator do in one second and that is given by the inverse of the time period so frequency nu is given by 1 over t or omega over 2 pi shown in the relations over here now it is really interesting to write the solution for the harmonic oscillator for many physical problems it is very very useful to write the solution in the form of a cos omega t plus pi as shown in this equation over here in this particular solution 
x of t equal to a cos omega t plus phi, a is the amplitude, omega is the frequency, phi is the phase shift. Let us go ahead and plot the solution like over here and put it inside a menu plate and see what, what is meant by changing a omega and phi. What does a omega and phi do? So, let me go ahead and execute this. You, if you want, you can pause the video and try it out yourself. You can copy the command from the screen over here. This is the plot I get. I have created a bounding box over here using the frame equal to true option and I have put given three parameters in the manner plate a, omega and phi where I have set the value of a between 0.1 to 5, value of omega between 0.1 to 5 and value of phi between minus pi to pi. So, let me go ahead and vary these three parameters. Let me expand it out and I will vary these three parameters to show you what happens as I move the sliders. When I move a, a is, a is for amplitude. As you expect, this is going to change the amplitude of the ox oscillation that is going to make the oscillation bigger and bigger. The peak will be at a higher value, the trough will be at a, at a, at a lower value. But as we do that, notice that the zeros do not change. As I change the amplitude, increase or decrease the amplitude, notice that the zeros, that is this point, remains fixed. So, this time fixate your eye at this point and as I move the slider, notice that that point is not changing. It remains where it is. So, the zeros do not change as I change A. It simply changes the amplitude because A is the entire multiplicative constant to cosine omega t plus phi. So, so, changing A is only going to change the overall amplitude, it is not going to change where the zeros are. Let me change omega, as I increase omega, I should see more oscillations per unit time. So, as I change omega, increase omega, you see there are more and more oscillations per unit time and we say that the pendulum is oscillating or, or the harmonic oscillator is oscillating with the increased frequency. As I decrease omega, the number of oscillations decrease. And similarly over here, as I change the phi, Notice what happens. As I change phi, the entire oscillation and entire plot simply shifts to the left or to the right depending on what the value of phi is. That is why we call the phi as phase shift. It simply says if, if the maximum is happening at the origin or whether a minima is at the origin or whether there is a 0 at the origin. So, by changing the phase phi, I can simply shift the entire plot and ask what is happening at the origin? Is it a 0, is it a minima or is it a maxima or is some other value? So, A is called the amplitude, omega is called the frequency or the angular frequency and phi is called the phase shift. It is important to understand what these three things are doing in order to understand the solution. Notice the use of row function over here. In order to create a nice plot label as over here, so they, that you can read the amplitude, the frequency and phi, I made use of the row option over here, row function over here for the plot label option. It appears to be a complex con construct over here, but if you play around it with it, you will figure out what exactly is going on over here. So, I leave that as an exercise for you. It has been explained over here that when I use the row function like this, it simply gives me a print of the values like that and that is exactly has been used over here. From this, you can find out that let us say, let us say set A equal to 2. You see that the maxima is exactly at 2. Okay, so I go, I, I, I request you to type in this command and play around more with it so that you can get a grasp of the solution.